Hi, and welcome back to Lesson 5 in the Space Invaders course. In the last lesson, we got the player ship moving left and right using the command keys. But our program is now going to start building in complexity. So we've been using variables so far to keep track of what's happening in our system. But as we build more and more code, we're going to get more and more variables. So we need to have some tricks up our sleeve to help us manage these and keep our software readable. So let's start by loading in our lesson four code so that we have a starting point for this lesson. So I'm going to go load lesson four. Just make sure that's the one we want. And then this is going to be lesson five. So let's just make sure we save that as lesson five so we have everything safe. So going into our code then. As we write our programs, it's best to try and keep things as flexible as possible. So if we need to change values or play around with things, we make it as easy as possible. So let's have a look at what we could do with our current program. So we'll go back out to our console and, and run it. And if we use our left and right keys, we can see that our player ship moves. Um, it's, it's quite slow at the moment. So let's have a think about how we can make that faster. So back into our code. We know that we look for our button presses here, and this is where we update the player left and right position. So player ship X controls the left and right position, and we either add one or take away one to make it move left or right. So say we wanted to have it going at twice the speed. What we'd do here is we would change these values to two. And if we now come out and run that, we should see that our player ship moves um, will double the speed. But having, having these numbers here, it actually makes it slightly awkward for us to make changes. So any time I want to change the, the, the speed of the player ship, I have to come in, I have to remember that it's these two numbers, and I have to go and edit them. And if I was using this same speed value in quite a few different places around my code, then I'd have to go and make sure I find all of those. So what we can try and do here is we can try and make this easy for ourselves. And what we're going to do is we're going to extract a variable, which other means we're going to replace this number by a variable. So let's call it player ship speed. And we're going to set that equal to two. So we've now got a variable which actually describes what this number two is. So let's put that into our code. So again, I can, I can copy this with control C and I can put this down here and I can also change this to, to player ship speed. So what we've now got is a variable that makes it very easy for us to change our ship speed. By using the variable in our calculations, it also means that if we change it here, then automatically everywhere else in our code that uses that value will also be updated. So let's have a look at changing that speed again. So again, we could take that value to three and we could run it. And it's now probably going a little bit too fast for us. So we can come back in again here and we can change that back to, let's say 1.5 and come out here again and run that. And we now have a reasonable speed of our player ship. But hopefully you can see there that using this variable allows us then to make very quick changes to our code in a very controlled way. We don't miss any parts where we're using that value. We also have some other numbers built into our code that describe how our player ship works. So if we scroll down a bit, we have a line here which actually displays the sprite we're using for the player ship on the screen. Now at the moment we've only got one player ship and we've put it into sprite zero. But say we wanted to change that so that when we um, increase our level or when we get past certain levels, our player ship uh, changes to a more powerful ship. So if we go into our sprite editor up at the top of the screen here, say in sprite number one, we wanted to create a, a different ship. 
So let's say that we were creating a, a sort of more triangular base ship. Let's just fill that in. Okay. So we now have sprite number one being a different ship design. If we go back into our code editor, again, we could put that in here. And if we then run that, you'll see we have a different ship displaying for our player. Go back into our code. Again, changing this number is, is going to be awkward and we don't know what that number really means. It's sort of, it's, it, we have to remember what the one means there. So what we could do is we could create another variable here and call it player ship sprite. And if we then come up the top of the screen, and here we have player ship oh, sprite, and we can set that to one. And that will then of course keep us in the red ship, or if we want we can put it back to zero, and that will keep us with the original green ship. So again, if I run that, we now have our green ship. But we now have a very easy way of swapping the sprite that we use for our player ship. We also see in our code, we have a number of variables in here, and I'm sorry, a number of values in here. So we have zero and 232 as the limits for where our player ship can move. We might decide that that needs to be something that we can change as well. So we could say up here, so player ship x max equal to 232, player ship x minimum equal to zero. So those are the two limit values that we have for our player ship. So again, I can highlight that and control C to copy it. And that was the maximum value. So again, I can replace this 232 using control V with the maximum and this one with the maximum. And then I can copy my minimum variable with control C and I can fit it in here. Oh, he says trying to highlight that. And in here. Okay. So at the moment, everything's working the same as before, but I could decide that actually I don't want my player ship moving all the way to the screen. Maybe I'm gonna put a scoreboard down one side of the screen. So I might decide that I actually wanted to stop at 50. So again, if we come back and run that, you'll see now that our ship stops part way in from the edge. But we've now got ways of controlling our program uh, in a very understandable way. So we know that changing this value will change the player ship speed. Changing this value, the sprite, and changing these values will control how far left and right our ship can move. But if we look at this list of variables, it's starting to grow quite quickly. We've already got six variables and we've only just covered moving left and right. Having our variables structured in this way as a single variables, each with their own specialized task, it is great and that's got us up and running and it makes our code a lot more readable. But when we come to write our more complex programs, as, as we're going to in this course, we're going to need to move this data from place to place. So perhaps in, in one area of our code, we're going to need to pass in the entire ship model so that it can be updated and so on. With the variables as separate values, that can be quite hard. So what we need to do is look at a way in which we can package these variables together, which makes it much more easy to handle them and then transport them from one place to another within our code. So looking at our individual variables, we now want to create a single variable that will contain all the information needed to describe our player ship. We still need all the individual values, such as the X and Y position, but we're now going to store this inside our new player ship variable. This creates a sort of super variable, which we can now use in our software. It's actually a single variable, which we can pass around between bits of our code very easily. But when we want to, we can then open it back up again 
and inside we'll find all the information we need to describe our player ship. These super variables are actually called objects and we're starting to have a look at what's known as object-oriented programming. We'll be using these throughout our code to represent each of the items in our software, such as the player ship, the player's bullets, the missiles from the aliens and the aliens themselves. So let's have a look at how we implement these objects in our Tick80 software. A lot of languages have special object-oriented programming features, but in Lua, we're going to use what are known as tables to actually add our objects into the system. A, a table in Lua is simply a special variable which allows us to put other variables inside it. So let's create our player ship table. So we do it exactly the same as we do with any variable. So we call it player ship and we're going to set it equal to this table. So I'm going to use what are known as curly braces, which are on the two buttons beside your P key, the little curly brackets. And using those, that now creates a table. So if I go in between the brackets and give myself a few spare lines, what I can now do is in this area here, is I can start adding some other variables. So again, we're inside the player ship table. So again, by convention, I tab in by one so we can see the structure. So let's create our position variables. So we're already in the player ship. So I can say this is going to be the X position. And we can set that to our same initial value of 120. We then need to add a comma before we can start putting in our other variables. So we need a Y position and we're going to start that off at 128. We also need to have our sprite number. So sprite number, and we can set that equal to zero. And then we have our minimum X position, which we're going to set to zero, and our maximum X position, which we're going to set to 232. And of course, not forgetting our speed variable, which we're going to set equal to one. So we've now got all the same information. So all of these variables up the top here, which were all single variables, are now held within our main player ship variable. But if we have a look at our player ship, we've got this idea of creating objects. So in fact, we're collecting together values that really li should be living together. And if we look at our player ship, if I split it up a bit like this, we, we have our X and Y position. That actually represents the position of our ship on the screen. So ideally, these two values should go together as well. And why not? Why, so why don't we do that? Let's create a position object inside of our main player ship object. So again, we do it exactly the same way. So we create it as a table. And inside our table, we create our X and our Y. And we can then remove these ones, but we do have to remember to put a comma after our table, because in effect, this block here is creating one variable and we need to separate from, uh, we can use a comma to separate it then from the other variables. So if I take out these ones at the top here as well, and let's clean up our code a wee bit. So we now have, oh, and don't forget that we are doing lesson five here. So we now have our new player ship object, which is equal to this table, which contains another object, which is a table containing our X and Y position, but again, we're, we're taking it as a single position object. And we then have some separate values which represent which sprite we're using, the maximum and minimum left and right positions, and the speed at which our ship moves. So we've just been reworking our variables.
And actually, this, this process of going through and rewriting a block of our code, not so that it changes what it does, but that it changes how we've structured our code, that this is called refactoring. But we've now taken out those individual variables. So if we scroll down a bit, all of these bits here where we're referencing variables, this isn't going to work. And if I try and run my program at the moment, I will get an error coming up. So let's go back into our code. So really we need to replace these old variable names with our new object variables. So the way in which we reference these is we're going to need to get access to this x variable. So this is in the player ship variable or the player ship object, but then inside the position object inside of that, and then our x. And we really just do it as if it were like a little bit of a tree. So we say we take our player ship object, we want to go inside that, so we use the full stop or the dot, this is called dot notation. We want to then access the position object, but we also want to go inside that, so we use a dot, and we want to access the x value. So that's how we now reference this new x position variable. So let's copy that. And we know that it needs to go in there as well. And we paste it in. Now, if you look at this line, it's becoming very long. So what we need to do is come down here and we can actually take a new line partway through that. And again, we indent it. So we're saying here that our player ship dot position dot x is equal to our player ship dot position dot x minus, and then in here we will need to do our player ship dot speed. And that then gives us our new line for this bit of code, but using now our object notation. Okay, so we've used our, I scroll up here. So remember, we do player ship to access the first bit, the first outer object. We then use the dot, which says look inside that object. And then we find our position object, which is here. And then we say look inside the position object and we find then our x value, and that's an actual value that we can use. So playership.position x equal to playership.position x minus playership.speed. And again, playership.speed is the playership object, then looking inside that to find the speed variable. So let's update the rest of our stuff as well. So this playership.x, if I copy that again, so anywhere where I see playership x, that needs to become a playership.position.x. And again, I can take a new line there and tab it in. And then over here, <coughs> we have our playership.speed. So again, if I just do dot .speed, we have again our playership x here, so that becomes playership.position.x is less than playership and we've got at the moment our x min so playership dot min x coming down here again this will also be our playership dot minimum x and this one over here will be our player ship dot position dot x and this one will be our player ship dot max x and this will be dot max x position dot x and over here player ship dot position dot x and 
down this last line then, so we have player ship dot sprite number, player ship dot position dot x, and again we can we can take a new line here and tab it in by one, and this one here is player ship dot position dot y. So that should cover everything in that. So say you have a look through yours as well and make sure that any anywhere where you see one of the old variable names, we've now replaced it with our new object notation. So let's go out and see if we've got everything on that. So if I run that, we now have our ship and it's doing exactly the same as it was before, but we've now got it using our object variables rather than these individual variables. So back into our code. This lesson then has really been about some better programming techniques where we've gone from having our individual variables, which would end up being scattered all over the place, to going to our object oriented programming using these Lua tables, which lets us keep our, our information gathered together in our objects. Now, one thing as well, we can see that we're now starting to get much more complicated code. There is a little button up here, this, this F button which says switch font, which allows you to switch to a smaller font. So we can actually see more code on each line. And that can be very useful, especially when we're having larger or, or longer lines such as these. So that finishes off this lesson. Make sure you save your work either by pressing Ctrl S or going out to the console and typing in save. So in our next lesson, we're going to be looking at adding some bullets for our player ship so it can, so it can fire some bullets. But we'll also be looking at the idea of, as well as sectioning off our variables into these things called objects, we can start to section off blocks of code into things called functions. So we'll be covering functions in the next lesson. See you then. Bye. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.